paid regular guy here. So I put together a video on a Christensen Arms uh, 65 Creedmoor, and in that video I went through setup of the rifle, leveling, mounting of the scope, stuff like that. The second part of the part of the video that I wanted to do another one on tailoring a load to that rifle. So I'm going to kind of go through and kind of show you a little bit of what I'm doing here. So I'm, I'm trying a bunch of different bullets, and I'm going to try some different powder amounts, how many grains of powder, to see which one that gun likes. So some of what I'm trying here, I've got a couple of Hornaday uh, 143 grain ELD X, um, 140 grain ELD match. Uh, I've also got a, uh, a burger, uh, 140 grain ELD hunting. I'm gonna try a Barnes, 127 grain Barnes triple shock. Um, I've also got a little uh, 127 grain Hornaday. Um, not sure where I put that box. Uh, but basically what I'm doing is I want to try a few different things and I'm going to do a ladder test of sorts. So what I've got here is I've, I've started to load some of these up and what I've done is I've taken my load data so say on, on the burger 140 grain VLD my powder quantities are anywhere from 37.5 grains to 39.5 and I just go in, in 0.5 steps. So my first load is 37.5, and I've loaded three. And then I'm going to bump up to 38.0, and I've loaded three, and so on and so on, all the way up to 39.5. Now what I'm doing is in each different bullet, I'm doing the same thing, and I'm stepping up 0.5 grains for each one and I'll go from just above a minimum load to just under a maximum load what they call out in the reloading data and so basically you can kind of see what I've got going on here so I've got burgers I'm working on the Hornaday ones right now I've got some barns these Hornadays are done and I've got a few more Hornadays that I'll put in over here um, so basically I'm just going through and just throwing my powder um, the one thing that is really nice is I've got this little powder trickler that's all automatic. So I, I, all I have to do is type in what I want it to do and it's going to trickle it for me. And it's super precise. So I'm going to keep going with this and then we'll take this out to the range. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on a target, with individual bullseyes, I'm going to shoot three, then I'm going to shoot three, then I'm going to shoot three, and compare what's the best group of that bullet, and then I'm going to move to the next manufacturer, and to the next, to the next, and see if I can find a pattern of one that this gun really likes. Okay, so here we are, back from the range. I took this out and shot this, and I shot through those different bullets that we had loaded up that I had showed you in that other video. Um, I want to real quickly kind of go through what we found. It was actually kind of interesting. So the first ones that I shot was a Hornaday. It's a 140 grain ELD match. And if you can see this, I kind of have different groupings here. And I shot all the different powder mounts. So this is 37 grains, 37.5 grains, 38 grains. The other thing that I was doing with this is I was calculating and, and the speed. I have a little magneto that I can mount on the end of the rifle that, that measures how fast that bullet's going. So the other thing I'm watching is the consistency of shot to shot to shot. One thing that I did notice that was kind of interesting, my speeds typically would speed up just a little bit from first shot, second shot, third shot. Um, but it's kind of nice to see, you know, what kind of a difference, how much faster. I mean, it was, I was taking my time when I did this. I went to the range, set, tried to set up nice. I did have two guys on either side of me. Uh, that were shooting. One was a 308, one was an AR, unsuppressed, and they were just banging, banging, banging. So it was a little annoying. Um, but I tried to just take my time, shot to shot, make them count. Uh, I was shooting off the tripod, just as it is here, and I had sandbags under the back end, so I was pretty stable. Um, but I don't know, the groupings of the, this Hornaday, I didn't really care for. I We need to be a little bit tighter now. So that was the first one that I tried. The second one, was 143 grain Hornady ELD-X. So it's a little bit more of a match grade bullet. 
Um, but then again, the grouping, not not too hot. I mean, it started out, I'm like, okay, you know, lighter powders, but it seemed like the more powder I went to, the more that group started to open up. So that one wasn't a good one. The next one that I tried was uh, Hornady 129 grain SST. It's a tipped little bullet, it's a great little bullet. This gun did not like them. So the first group, 40 grains, second group, 40.5, 41. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if that was me or if it was just really rad. Uh, wasn't impressed with that one. The next one was the Barnes. So the Barnes was 127 grain LRX. So it's a triple shot bullet and it was a little tipped bullet. Um, and it shot really pretty good. So it started out with 38 grains, 38.5. That's a decent little group. Um, 39, 39.5. I felt better about those groups than I did out of the Hornady. Um, but anyway, I think we can do a little bit better than that. The next one that I shot is a, a burger. So the burger bullets I really, really like. And I've, I've got a, it's the Ruger RPR N65 Creedmoor that absolutely loves this 140 grain uh, long range target. And I thought, you know what, just for friends, I'm going to take that load and shoot it through this. It's not really the way, I, I want to set this rifle up for hunting. So it's not quite the bullet that I want to use, but just for grins, I shot it in a decent little group. Um, speeds were 20, 2447 to 2450. That's only three feet per spe second spread. I was pretty impressed with that consistency. But again, not, not really the bullet that I want to shoot out of this gun. So I thought, you know what, let's try the burger. It's a... Uh, um, VLD hunting bolt. So it's a little bit more tailored for hunting. And I'll tell you what, it shot dang good. So my first group was uh, 37.5 grains, real good. 38 grains, pretty good. I, I, I don't know if that was a fluke or, or what. Um, 38.5, you can't, you can't complain about that. That's about, oh, maybe quarter inch, 5 sixteenths inch group center to center, uh, 39 grains, 39.5. You know, I, I'm, I'm thinking with the, the tightness here, the tightness here, I may have pulled that, I don't know. But overall, I think that I've found the bullet that I want to mess with. So one thing real quick, always be careful when you're doing this. You're dealing with a lot of pressures. You're dealing with a lot of, you know, as you're messing with how much powder you're putting in that bullet, um, be really, really careful. So I always start with my manual and I'll look at my minimums and maximums and I'll kind of play inside that range. And that's why I was kind of going up that, that, that 0.5 grains. The other thing that I'm going to do is as I shoot, I'm going to watch my pressures. So I can start to look to see if I have any issues with my case. I'm going to look at my primer and see how flattened it is. You know, if, if there's a lot of pressure showing up, I'm going to be aware of that. Um, these shot really, really good, very consistent. I was very pleased with that. So like I was saying, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to play with the length a little bit. So I have my overall cartridge length that my, my manual or my manufacturer says to start with. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a run out test and see how much jump, maybe run out's the wrong word for it, but uh, jump from the casing to the rifling. So how far has that bullet got to travel? before it hits and engages those riflings. Uh, I've got another video where I show a smoke test, kind of showing how to find very precisely where that run out is. So typically I, I start with about 30 thousandths of an inch run out to the riflings, but you can up that just a little bit or take that down. So that's my next step. I'm gonna kind of mess with that just a little bit and see what, see what I can do. I still want it to fit in the magazine and feed really well, but I'm going to see if this rifle likes a little more or a little less jump. The other thing that I can do is instead of sizing the entire case, I can neck size. Now if I do that, if I neck size a case, this case, this, this bullet has to be used in this gun. I can't use it in a different gun because I might, I might not have 
the proper sizing. But I can start to see some accuracy gains by just sizing the neck. That way the case is already formed to this, uh, to this rifle, so there's not going to be as much movement. The other thing that I noticed that I'm going, going to go ahead and change with this, this rifle comes with 10, 10 MOA built into the rail. Um, so what that is, is that's basically kicking the scope just a little bit so that my center, when I, when I center it on, say I zero at 100 yards, I have more elevation gain. So I'm, I, I don't know if this makes sense. The old school, we always wanted the scope, your elevation and your windage to be roughly in the center of my adjustments. That way I have the best light transfer through the scope, everything like that. But now, with all of the new target scopes, the turrets that you can dial on elevation, I don't want to do that. Basically what I want, I want that scope bottomed out at my sight in distance so that that gives me a lot of elevation that I can dial on. And the 10 is just not enough. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this mount with a different LaRue mount that has 20 MOA built into it. And that should get me pretty close to the bottom, bottomed out. And what that will do is that will make it so that, say I'm going to shoot 800 yards, and if I've bottomed out good, I can dial on enough elevation to get to my 800 yards. And then say, okay, I've got a shot. I want to make 1,200 yards. I want to shoot that distance. Well, I don't have that much distance on here. But because I bottomed it out, I can dial on my 8. And then inside on my reticle, this has a Horus reticle, so it's, it's all graduated out. I can dial on 8 and then add another 4 if that makes sense. And then that way I've got a good hold at whatever distance. So that, that's important. I, wanna, I do want to change that. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it. The next step from there is I'm going to start to, to uh, record all of my data and I'm going to create a sheet on this rifle. The bullet that it likes, the, the, the overall length of the cartridge, the, the powder that I'm using. And then I'm going to start to kind of develop my my dope my my dad of it i have all my come ups and then once i get this all kind of figured out i can put it into a ballistic calculator and true it find out what what is really true once i get to that point then i'm going to create my come up charts so this is something that will live with this perspective rifle it's not this one this one's to a different rifle but i'm going to build one for this and I have all of these cool little sheets in here that I've created. So I've got different altitudes in here that I can go shoot at. And it tells me how much elevation. I've also calculated some windage into this. And these, I've got these all the way from 100 yards. It's my zero. And I've calculated on this card all the way out to 1200 yards, my elevation. So you can kind of see how handy that can come in. You know, if you're target shooting, you're out hunting, you know, whatever. It's kind of nice to know exactly where that's going to go. And then I have all different ones for all different elevations. And I'll usually put in where I'm going to be shooting, typically the elevation. And I can have it right there at a glance. And then I can have some other data in here as well um, if I need to do some math on the fly. But anyway, I learned a lot with this. I'm pretty pleased with with the way it's shooting. I think that I can narrow and kind of dial that in just a little bit better by maybe running, messing with a run out, and then also trying neck sizing in this rifle. But anyway, I hope this was helpful to you. I, I hope that I don't know. I love doing this stuff. So if there's things out there that that you're you've got questions on, you know, that maybe I've run through that problem, ask me, send me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. If there's videos that you think, hey, that'd be cool, you know, what would you do with this or whatever, I'd love the feedback. Um, I really enjoy this sport. I love the opportunity to share the sport with, with all kinds of people out there. Um, anyway, be safe, happy shooting, and I'll catch you on the next one.